Greetings, M Squared here. Today we are going to talk about exponential functions. Our goal, our learning target for today, is to be able to recognize from a graph, an equation, or a table whether something's an, ex an exponential growth model or an exponential decay model. But before we get into exponential growth and decay, I want to remind us of linear because you need to be able to recognize the difference between a linear function and an exponential function to start off. So let's review our linear functions. Remember that we learned y equals mx plus b was one of the three ways we learned to write linear functions. This is called slope-intercept form because the m is the slope of the line and the b is the y-intercept of the line, or sometimes people say the beginning. It's not really a beginning of a line, but it's where we usually start to graph it when we're graphing it. So remember, the m is the slope, and the b is the y-intercept. So just real quick, right? We have negative 3. When y is alone, the number in front of x is our slope. And when y is alone, the number added or subtracted without being multiplied by an x is our y-intercept. And we call the letter we use that for that as a b. So if we were going to graph that, we'd start at 4. That would be our initial amount on x equals 0, the y-axis, and our slope would be negative 3. And we would know that negative 3 would be going down from left to right if negative 3 is a slope because it goes, the negative tells us it goes down or it kind of decays. Um, right here, we have a slope of 1 half, so we know it's positive, so it's going to be going up, and our y-intercept is negative 10. And then this is a really basic kind where you don't see any numbers. But remember, if there's no number in front of x, that means it has to be a 1. And if there's no number added or subtracted, that would mean it would have to be a 0. Because there's only one thing you can multiply by x, by, by x to get x, and only one thing you can add to x to get x. So you can add 0 and it doesn't change anything. You can multiply by 1 and it doesn't change anything. You should be able to recognize a linear function when you look at a graph because it's a straight line. And this one is going down from left to right, so we would know our slope was negative. This one's going up from left to right, we would know our slope is positive. So one is decaying or decreasing, one is growing. Also from a table, how do you recognize a linear function? Well, you recognize a linear function by what is being added each time. If you have a consistent thing, number, that's being added to each one, then you know it's linear. That's how you spot a linear function. So we have negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Things are going up by 1's here, and things are going up by 3's here. That tells us that the slope is 3. How do you tell what the beginning part is? You look for an x of 0. There's our y-intercept. It's 8. So from this table, it's super easy to write our linear function because we know our slope is x because that's what's being added each time. And our y-intercept is 8 because that is the y-coordinate when x is 0. So that would be on the y-axis. Sometimes tables are written horizontally. Sometimes they're written vertically. This one's written vertically. Let's see. It's going up by 1 each. But here, what's happening? We're subtracting 2 each time. That means our slope is negative 2. It's, de it's a decay model, decreasing. And 0, in, when x is 0, that's our y-intercept, so we know our y-intercept is 10. That will give us some context into the next little area where we're going to switch functions now. We're going to learn a new function. It's called an exponential function. And here is how it looks. It's a little bit different. Let's see what's the same. Remember, this is a y. Remember we had our linear was y equals mx plus b. So they both have a y, that's what's the same. They both have an x, but the x is very different. Notice that here x was being multiplied by a number, and over here x is telling us how many times this number is being multiplied. So we have an a times b to the x. So the big tell on an exponential function is that x is the exponent. That is how you tell it's an exponential equation. There's two other numbers you'll see. A is the initial value, or y-intercept, unless it's shifted, but we've got a y-intercept. We won't talk about the shifts. Um, and then B is the constant ratio. That's the number that's going to be multiplied over and over again this many times. Okay, So B can never be 1, and A can never be 0. 
and we just want to make sure that's due. So our growth and decay models look like this. So these are exponential. So one time, depending on B, it's all about B. If B is greater than one, we have a growth model. That's how you can look at a, um, you can look at an equation and tell whether it's growth or decay by B. You can look at a graph and tell whether it's growth or decay by when it goes up or down. So it goes up from left to right, that's a growth model. If it goes down from left to right, the curve is a decay model. So remember, you have to know all three ways, through an equation, through a graph, and through a table. So through a, this is just the graph part, growth, decay. And then I'm gonna show you in a minute how this B plays into it all. But a couple words that we wanna make sure we understand. An asymptote is a line that a graph gets closer and closer to, but it never actually reaches. So you'll see, and we'll kind of look at it in the table in a minute, but you'll see that it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. It's actually never gonna cross the x-axis. It's gonna forever get closer and closer. And it's gonna get super, super close, but it's never gonna to touch it because we're always gonna be dividing by the next thing. So that is what an asymptote is. A constant ratio, it's gonna be a number, an irrational number, and it's gonna be always raised to that power of x. Sometimes we don't use x, but it'll always be the variable. Um, in word problems, it's sometimes it's t for time. And the initial value is always the a, it's that beginning amount, All right? So those are the things we need to know. So now let's do a little look at each way. We got a graph, an equation, and a table. We're gonna learn all three ways. So graph is pretty easy. You just gotta remember growth goes up from left to right. Decay goes down from left to right. That's how you're gonna tell. And it's not a straight line, it's a curve. The equation, you're always gonna look at B to determine whether it's growth or decay. You're gonna look right there, the thing that's being raised to a power. That is what tells you. If B is greater than one, it's growth. So right here, our A is five and our B is two. Because two is bigger than one, I know this is a growth model. Right here, our B is one fourth. Well, that's less than one. That's between zero and one. This means it's a decay model. So it starts at 100. Our A is 100. That's our initial value. And our rate or our constant ratio is one fourth. That means this is a decay model. So when you're looking at an equation, that's how you're going to tell. Okay, over here, a table. So remember in linear, we added the same thing each time. Well, in an exponential equation, it's about multiplying or dividing each time. So you'll see that this one, I'm multiplying each time by three. That's how I can tell from a table if it's exponential. But it could also be dividing each time, which remember, dividing by three is the same as multiplying by one third. One third, not one half, <laughs> one third. So you can also say you're multiplying by one third. So your B here, when you're dividing by three, your B would be one third. Your B here would be three. So just kind of like the slope told us what we're adding each time, the B tells us what we're multiplying by each time. That's super important to know. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a bunch of, uh, I'm gonna put a bunch of equations, and then I'm gonna put a bunch of tables and then a bunch of graphs, and we're gonna talk about which ones are exponential and which ones aren't. Okay, here are four functions. So I want you to recognize which ones are exponential. They're not all exponential. So I'm gonna just give you a second to check. You can also pause if you want more time to think about it. I can tell an equation is exponential if it has an x as an exponent. So I'm gonna look at each one. Does this have an x as an exponent? Absolutely, that's exponential. Is this x an exponent? Absolutely, that's exponential as well. Does this x, is this x an exponent? You betcha. Is this one? No, it is not. This is a linear function. Okay, well, let's get that out of there so we can just talk about the exponential functions. Now, which ones are growth and which ones are decay? Remember, it's all about b or that number that is raised to the power of x. So I look here and I see that b is 1 tenth. That is a number between zero and one. That means this is a decay model. This b is three. That's bigger than one. So I know this is a growth model. This B is eight, also bigger than one. So this also is a growth model. Now I'm gonna show you some tables. Here are four tables. Can you tell which ones 
are exponential. Remember, in an exponential equation, we're going to either be multiplying each time or dividing each time, right? All right, so let's look. What is happening here? It's kind of hard to tell with the decimals. One thing you can do to tell is you can divide this by this, 6, 0.64 divided by 0 0.16, 0 0.16 divided by 0 0.04. You can go backwards to see, because the opposite of division is multiplication. So if you divide this one by this one, you're figuring out what you would multiply this one by to get this one. Now, I wouldn't do it on that one because I can see 1, 4, 16, and 64. And I know that 1 times 4 is 4, and that 4 times 16 is, I mean, 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So I can see it. But if you couldn't, because some people don't like decimals, you might not be able to tell. But I can tell that that is being multiplied by 4 each time, so I know that's exponential. Let's look over here. Negative 7, 3, 1, 5. Well, it doesn't look like it's multiplying, because it would usually get bigger faster. I don't I know that there's 4 between these two, so then I'm going to check. Well, 1 plus 4 is 5. Is negative 3 plus 4 1? Yeah, it is. Is negative 7 plus 4 3? Negative 3? Yes. So sometimes if I can't tell what's happening here, I might look down a little further. That's being added each time. Okay, that is not an exponential function because exponential functions have to multiply. So that one's out. That's linear. We're going to take that one out. Let's look at these other two. All right, we have what's happening each time. It's hard to tell right here, isn't it? Again, you can use your calculator, but right here I noticed something. 23 is half of 46, and 46 is half of 92. So I'm thinking I'm being multiplied each time by two. So let me go back, yeah, 11, two times 11 is 22, and then two times a half is one, so that is 23. So I see, oh yeah, I'm doubling it each time. Right? So this is definitely exponential. And if I'm multiplying by 2 again, remember, that's an exponential growth model. I'm not dividing, so it's not getting smaller, so I know that that's an exponential growth model. Let's look at this one. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 4 is 80. 80 times 4 is 320. So again, I'm multiplying by 4. That's a growth model. All right, the next one is the graphs, and that's probably the easiest one. So I have four graphs here. Can you tell which ones are exponential? If you know that exponential is a curve and it goes either down from left to right or up from left to right, then you're pretty sure that this straight line is not an exponential. This is linear. It's going down, so that would be like a linear decay or decreasing. So that one's out. Let's just look at these then. So let's look at this one. We see it's going down from left to right. That tells us it's a decay exponential it's not it's exponential decay it's not exponential growth because it's going down all right this one is going up from left to right so if the curve is going up from left to right we know that it's exponential growth and you also see this little this arrow that goes almost straight to the left that's where our asymptote is going to be looks like our asymptote might be around that one mark. It doesn't look like it's zero on this one. Sometimes these can shift up and down, but it's definitely exponential growth because it's going up. And finally, this one again is curving down. So that's an exponential decay model. Hopefully you can remember all of those three ways we learned, right? You have your goal, remember? Our, our learning target is from graphs, from equations, or from tables to be able to determine if it is an exponential growth model or an exponential decay model. Good luck with that. M squared, signing out.